We have been running this webinar series titled Marketing Mondays since the lockdown started to provide a platform to marketeers to learn from fellow marketing gurus. We have a very important topic today, how marketing can enable 2x sales. We all know that marketing keeps getting the daunting onus of multiplying the sales and hence it's important to uncover the layers which enable this magic band that marketing can sway in favor of sales multiplication. The key agenda items we plan to touch today are as follows. What approach sales and marketing need to adopt for success? What are the levers marketing can press to make sales 2x? What are the typical challenges between marketing and sales and how to overcome them? How sales can enable or support marketing to make it more effective and in turn marketing enabling sales to close more? What role can technology play in this discussion? In case you want us to cover any other topic or have a question, please mention that in the Q&A section or chat panel. We have an eminent panel today. I'll request them to do a quick self-introduction. Sandeep, why don't you start uh, first? Hey, thanks, Anand, and thanks for Techsports Media for getting us here. Uh, looking forward to the session today. So quick round of introduction. Uh, so my name is Sandeep. Uh, I take care of field marketing for India and Southeast Asia at Freshworks. Um, prior to this, I've been at Freshworks for almost five years now, helped them set up their outbound team. So actually had a, had a hand in both sales and marketing as well. So I'm really looking forward to the discussion. Prior to that, worked in multiple uh, early stage startups, fintech startups, um, worked in a couple of MNCs as well, donned both the hats, uh, weirdly enough. So um, happy to be here and really looking forward to having a further chat with Shankar and Suman as well. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Uh, Shankar, you want to go next? Uh, my name is Shankar Sareen. I have been into the B2B you know, tech space for, for 20 plus years now. Yeah, I am, I'm not that ancient, though I do dye my sideburns. Um, so I have been uh, with Tenable, a very niche cybersecurity uh, uh, startup. But prior to that, I worked with Cisco for good eight years, and then with IBM. So yes, happy to happy to share uh, my thoughts. Uh, any any questions? Anything around you know business to business tech uh, security space? Uh, I can be I can be of some help. And as Sandeep said, really looking forward to making this more of a successful interaction. We we are here to you know make it a two way street. It's not something that uh, we are gurus, but if if there are you know areas that we could help you with happy to happy to take those questions and happy to have a meaningful chat thank you so much thank you so much someone uh why did you give a quick introduction about yourself really glad to be part of this uh webinar. thank you Sandeep, uh, and, and also the backend team uh so myself Suman, and i take care of the growth for pocket it's a digital content entertainment company uh we have multiple brands like uh, filter copy dice media Google. We have local platform. Local is the, the biggest Indian streaming platform. And uh, uh, before that, I was with Housejoy. So Housejoy is uh, one of the startups. Uh, I was with them almost four years. Before that, I was with Rooms Tonight, the Dial, so multiple startup I have been been part of. So uh, it's been almost eight years that I'm to the startup ecosystem. And uh, uh, I before that, I was I was started my journey as a data entity analyst. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost a decade plus that I have been working in the industry right now. Cool. Thank you so much, Sumon. Thank you, everybody, Sandeep, Shankar, and Sumon. Friends, we hear more often that marketing can do wonders for the growth of an organization. Sales and marketing have a tight coupling and symbiotic relationship to make the organization successful. In today's discussion, we would attempt to uncover how this all can be achieved. Does the demand on marketing to support sales in supersizing is healthy or does it create fiction? But marketing cannot be left in its own world. And what would be better measure of ROI than an increase in sales? Between marketing and sales, what sort of relationship drives growth? We need to shift from blame game to collaboration and cohesion. 
Let's uncover all this and also how technology can help in achieving this. While we are moving from lockdown to unlocking, it is imperative that the aspirations and targets start soaring again. We must be better prepared and start the execution to supersize sales and make up for losses during the last year. All the views expressed by the speakers are their own and may not represent the viewpoint of the organization they work with. Let me start with Sandeep. Sandeep, how sales and marketing need to align with each other to achieve the overall goal of growth? You can draw parallels from free marketing. Oh, thanks, Anand. I think maybe I'll just clarify for the larger audience as well. So uh, sometimes field marketing is misconstrued as uh, on ground marketing per se. Actually, it's a lot more than that. Field marketing literally is that you're wearing a region hat. So essentially, when I say I'm a field marketer, I'm a field marketer for Southeast Asia. I'm a field marketer for India. And it covers the entire gamut of things. So I, I think um, what, what I'm going to say may not necessarily be from a field marketing perspective, but at least from a general marketing perspective, right? I feel like the biggest, and I'm just reading up some stats, right? So Marketo talks about how if you have greater alignment between sales and marketing, you can almost achieve 200% growth. And think about it. Unintentionally, sales and marketing are probably set at loggerheads with each other. I think, it, I think it really comes down to the goals, right? Because if you think at marketing, we talk about right from, let's say, pipeline to SQLs, M MQLs, leads, impressions, click-through rates, whatever. Those are pre predominantly our goals. And sales, we're talking about revenue, revenue, revenue. Now, I think the fundamental that needs to come around all of this is what are our shared goals? Uh, what goals are we going to carry on together? Like, for example, whether it's running a particular campaign or a particular activity, have both sales and marketing arrived at those goals together? How do I define my uh, elements within those goals, right? So I feel like one of the, I mean, there are several things you can do, and I'm sure I'll try to cover them in the, in the subsequent questions if, if possible. But then I, I feel like one of the biggest things is what is that shared goal that marketing and sales and marketing are going to carry together? And how am I going to measure that at multiple stages? Because unless we're carrying something together, now that goal, the eventual goal, of course, will be revenue. And I think as marketers as well, we're not, looking away from revenue because that's the core of everything that we do. But then uh, together as sales, it can we agree together and say, hey, this is how I'm going to define my MQL with the sales guys. This is how I'm going to define my SQL. Here's my campaign plan. And together, I think if, if sales and marketing are able to just join hands on simply defining what that goal is and agreeing to that goal, everything else can fall into place. Everything else is, is just a matter of that, whether it's greater lead scoring or uh, a few other things, agreements, SLA agreements on when a lead will be followed up and uh, all of the other elements, right? All of that can literally be this, the second part. But the core is, have we, do we have common goals? Have we agreed on those common goals? How together are we working to make that common goal happen? Uh, and I'm not just talking about revenue, but I want every other aspect of that as well. So when I say goal, so whilst revenue itself is the core, well, I agree with you, right? So sales and marketing, are each one's carrying a pipeline goal, each one's carrying a revenue goal. What I also mean is, whilst the revenue goal is static for everyone, what's important is that together we agree on this is how many MQLs or this is how many SQLs I'm going to. What is an MQL? What is an SQL? Like all of us know the definitions, but do we as sales and marketing together agree that this is how much is going to happen from a marketing side? This is how much is going to happen from a sales side? And I agree, there's always going to be this crossover of who did what. Um, but I feel like first let's get aligned on the goal and then we can figure everything else uh, as part of the subsequent process. Sure, sure. Thanks, Sandeep. Shankar, moving on to you, what are the pain points of a marketeer or challenges a marketeer face for driving the growth? Okay, uh, you know, I, I can probably uh, think of a couple of them, uh, uh, Anand and team. I would say the first is, uh, and it's, that's, that's something that's fairly common, and I think uh, most of us on this platform would agree. At times, uh, you know, marketeers are, are thought to be pure, you know, execution guys who um, don't understand industry, don't understand business. They are just the ones who would uh, put that fancy event across, would work on everything as tactical as giveaways, uh, food and beverages, all those things. I think uh, it's high time we we stand up and we tell the uh, you know sales or business leaders saying that we are as important a function as you. And, and don't forget, sales is actually a part of marketing and not the other way around. So you are in the bigger marketing gamut. 
and we are much more than simple you know uh, paper cups and t-shirts store uh, shop so i think that that's one important so marketers uh, need to have their own um, i would say seat on the table they are there to actually help you understand your uh, business goals and leave that next part to us we would ensure that we come back to you with a decent marketing mix to help you achieve those business goals but you know the minute a sales leader or somebody comes to you and says you know what let's do an event in xyz city i think we as marketers need to go back to them and ask them what's the logic why this city why an event and those questions unless you ask them you you treating yourself as you know that typical parent and adult kind of a relationship so i think it's it's important that you establish that peer to peer level with them and only you know as they say only when your back is bent can somebody take you for a ride so i think we as marketers need to ensure that we are uh, if not more at least at par with them and we ourselves need to do that bit so you know it's 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 marketing is not a support function at all so i think that is one area where i think uh, we we need to be very clear with with our sales counterparts and tell them that we own the revenue goals as much as you do we've got more goals than um, yours because you know in the end their i would say their performance appraisal is so simple it's black and white you achieve those numbers and you're done for us there are so many other things that we need to take care of brand awareness thought leadership can't be measured at all so i think i think that is one challenge that at times uh, we are treated uh, sub par which i think increasingly we getting there so we we don't take it uh, these days and i think the other is uh, uh, and I, and i i'll be honest i think many a times uh, we marketers are left aside when it comes to uh, you know you working with especially your uh, install base many a times you're given the goals of net new business or you know net new leads but uh, uh, the, the your sales counterparts would forget that existing customers are equally important be it from an upsell cross sell even from a testimonial perspective so i think these are something that i have come across and i honestly feel that uh, if if we are you know at least in our minds if we treat ourselves at equal or at par with them most of the problems disappear at that level itself i think uh, i i totally agree with you uh, shankar that is it's quite uh, critical and important that uh, both the marketing function as well as you know the entire organization uh, or the sales function they understand the value add that marketing is bringing onto the table that's true and then only they can you know uh, actually uh, uh, you know add the add the delta that we are talking about right sure uh, so on moving on to you what are the levers uh, marketing uh, team can press to make the 2x growth uh, and uh, please share specific pointers uh, see uh, marketing levers uh, there are many actually is based on the, the category of business right so uh, first thing i would uh, suggest that the organic traffic that any business generate right? uh, whether uh, via app or mobile web or desktop Uh, traffic so that ordering traffic that you are getting is a, is a basically uh, the, the byproduct of the marketing or byproduct of brand awareness uh, or, or byproduct of the brand valuation that you have it right uh, so we can't leave that so whenever our, our traffic is coming organically we should definitely uh, see that uh, the, the what is the funnel for that Uh, and, and we should we should look into the drop off or we should look into the conversion rate for that because uh, what exactly the the customer is looking for we have to provide that information on the ui uh, uh, you know so that is very very important so that's a very important level for any category of business second as as shankar also mentioned the existing audience or your your uh, the audience that you have acquired over time so that is very very important because nurturing that lead or that those customers uh, can give you more amount of revenue uh, word of mouth uh, it it can give you more on the cross sell after this multiple engagement that we can provide uh, then after that the third focus that uh, or third levers that I, i should definitely highlight is the pay campaign based on the the goal of what management is following or based on the company that what uh, the quarterly metrics right uh, what company want to achieve 
and based on that that you can have a multiple uh, you know plan according to that how much uh, you know lead is required or how much you know revenue is required or what is the category you want to focus for this month or this quarter and so and so because this is kind of a broad uh, discussion i can't focus on a particular category of business but again uh, this is uh, applicable for any category whether it comes to uh, uh, e-commerce uh, from a ota from a content business uh, so it, it is very much specific to the, the objective what the company uh, want to drive by. Right? The main lever should be your organic core traffic. Again, I want to highlight. Second is your the existing audience. You can't beat them because you might have paid earlier or the, those customer came uh, from a goodwill or average. So you can't beat them by any cost. Third is your paid campaigns. And, uh, spend wisely uh, before making it, uh, you know, actually spend because you know, Google and Facebook will not uh, come and ask you, or, or they will not, uh, you know, answer you that uh, you know it was went right or wrong. So you are the master, so you have to make your plan accordingly. This is to all marketers who are planning today and will do plan tomorrow. So you have to uh, plan those paid campaign accordingly, so that uh, you will be uh, driving that based on ROI because everything is measurable on digitally. So it is very very important to you know. Uh, plan your campaign accordingly based on the objective what you have. Sure, that's interesting, Suman. Thank you so much. Uh, Sandeep, coming back to you, you know, uh, how can field marketing be structured and operated to achieve 2x growth? I'll draw a little bit of a parallel because I happen to work in the Southeast Asia market also. Mm -hmm. Interesting, a couple of interesting facts, right? So in terms of how some levers potentially that can be used to drive better growth. I mean, whether it's 2x or 5x also. Um, the Southeast Asian market, if you think about it, is a very relationship-driven market. It's a market that requires constant touch. It's a market that requires, nobody's going to immediately buy something. You need to constantly be on top of them. Another insight that, that and this is again public information, is that it's a market that's very responsive to content. Uh, it's a market that if you have your content strategy in place, uh, you will generally see a lot more returns in that market as opposed to gen some of the other markets typically, right? Uh, so I think one of the key factors is if, if let's say, you're going after a particular region like Southeast Asia, you want to make sure you have a very strong content strategy, whether it's content at top of the funnel, middle or bottom of the funnel. And you're, you have a very strong nurture program also in place. Again, because it's a relationship market and let's say you're hitting a database or you're hitting a constant set of accounts, you want to be able to constantly nurture your, I mean, nurture those, those accounts. You need to put out new content that can help them drive so I feel like for, for a market like that, um, potentially one of the big levers is having the right kind of content strategy in place. Um, the other thing I also feel like is, is, is another point around the whole thing is that, so whilst you might have this content strategy and all of this in place, when, at what point, at what juncture are you going to bring the sales guys into play, right? So to drive um, better leads. Now, I think one of the, I mean, the obvious factors could be, hey, I want to see a product demo, hey, I want to have a further conversation. We all know of those. But building out a very strong lead scoring system as well, because with things like uh, content strategy, right? There's so much of how do you know? Uh, let's say if Anand is even interested in a Freshworks product, at what point? Uh, so I think figuring those bits out, so they don't work in isolation; they all work as part of the larger piece. Um, so building out a very strong. The, the other, I don't know whether other my other uh, panelists are seeing this as well. Digital is, digital is becoming a lot more uh, a congested environment as well, right? Because today we can't do physical events, we can't do, so everyone's on digital, everyone's on LinkedIn. So our normal CP, CPLs that you would easily get like 20, 30% less than what it is today, these numbers have gone up significantly high. So it, it becomes a case of, okay, if not for LinkedIn, if not for your paid ads, where do you go? What else do you do? How do you get these guys? If not for paid advertisement, can you organically get all of these guys in? Where will, will content play a role there? So I think those are all, in, in today's scenario, I think those are interesting questions to think about as well because as a marketer, it's even more challenging because now you everyone's online, right? So how do you give that? So I think I believe one of the big levers is content, uh, building the right kind of content, the right kind of messaging, and being able to measure and figuring out the next steps through that. I think that's one of the big levers, I believe. Shankar, uh, my next question is to you. What are the typical challenges between marketing and sales and uh, how to overcome them? Well, uh, we all would agree that few leaders, they do create deliberate friction so that there is some healthy competition, right? A different school of thoughts. But how it is to be balanced and how much 
of x is good and y is not good sort of thing so how to ensure that there is a you know uh, smooth coordination between marketing and sales but I, I i try to answer that with sandeep and suman if you think you know there are there are areas that you want to add uh, please do so so i would say the first part was uh, of your question if i remember was more around the typical challenges between a, a marketer and sales and marketing and sales mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know I, um, uh one obviously we all know the the constant fight we keep having and you you alluded alluded to that wherein you know you get an mql um you get generated lead and the sales person would say oh you know i've been talking to this account for probably a year or two quarters nothing nothing new it's something that you can't attribute to marketing i i am the one who should get the benefit and he'll rattle off some names who could which could be as as small as a you know a chaprasi in the office but nevertheless you you've got to give him that benefit but um, that that that's something that always happens marketing and sales we've always had fights on mqls sqls one to accepting the lead this was no no we've got yeah. proof points that we generated that so i think yeah. uh, that's become much more better with uh, you know with with as suman mentioned uh, you can't the matrix can't lie and you know if you've got um, somebody downloading a white paper filling up a form you you can get their ip tracked etc it's becoming more transparent that yes uh, indeed marketing or digital marketing did have a role but the but the added uh, at least what i felt is that most of the sale sellers are still you know in that um, traditional world that while they've heard these terms of digital marketing metric tracking um, account based marketing they still haven't uh, you know skilled themselves to actually get what it is so there's always a fight because we probably marketers over the years have realized what digital marketing is all about what mm -hmm. um, you know cookie based targeting is all about so we we are probably using some jargons in advertently but the sales people don't get it at all so at times you have to come down and tell them in very simple plain vanilla terms as to what this is all about and i think that kind of creates a little bit of friction because uh, nobody would want to you know give an impression or give a perception that they are old school or they don't get it uh, so there's always a fight between the two groups of each you know winning over the other and i hate to sound you know i'm probably sounding as if i'm too anti sales people which is not the case i've got some real good sales buddies uh, and and but i would say that that's one area where i felt that probably marketing uh moving a lot faster to digital channels um we marketers have kind of uh, we we understand that very well but our counterparts in sales are still kind of grappling with those acronyms and that's that's one area where i think both the both the teams uh, are, are not talking or are not on the same page um did i miss your second part i think uh, leaders creating deliberate friction uh, that's what you mentioned yeah. i i obviously you know i i would not want to work with that leader if, if there is something that's been created deliberately but i think if, mm -hmm. if there's a genuine concern i i still feel that you know it's 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 a time that you could just pick up the phone or give them a slack him or her and talk to them about it um mm -hmm. we've had those healthy fights on who's got the mql who's got the sql and i mm -hmm. think uh, many a times uh, we've also had a fight where you know you go back to them and tell them you know what um, we know that these accounts are more promising than the accounts that you selected because we've got logic or we've got reasoning to believe so i think um, it's it's at times uh, difficult for a sales person to you know listen to the fact that you've done the spade work and you've got some market intelligence that mm. while your intent is not to question him or her but uh, you are giving him some dope some information which in all uh, you know humility is something that he or she could leverage for the benefit of mm. the organization no i am absolutely with you you know uh, if if uh, both marketing and sales uh, they put each you know uh, themselves in each other's shoes and try to understand as to where the challenge is i think uh, half of the problem would be resolved so this this is more prescriptive sort of uh, uh, you know what i said but uh, I I still... yeah so i completely agree with sankar i just want to add one point here that it is with me hand in hand right uh, 
so we, we can like the marketing uh, team can do lot more better on the product marketing side to nurture those leads so again the coming back to the same thing that if you nurture those leads your sales funnel will look much better like like as mm. sanjay mentioned so we we can we can tell by data that hey look this lead can give you you know this much of because we are we can know the metrics in terms of their interest in terms of their footfall like multiple things we can capture based on the data which we can give it to them second thing is that we can manage the crm like i know the sales team are you know pretty smart of to manage the crm but again the the lead nurturing part right sending emails sending cold emails doing automation campaign those things right automation is a very very uh, big nowadays right even it comes to b2c or b2b business if you don't do uh, 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 properly of uh, automation campaign you are losing out of lot of business right? so those things can be like completely handled by the marketing team and once you are getting the like the, the last moment of, or maybe the, you are getting that uh, a feeling that yes this is going to be closed very soon uh, based on the business we can just hand it over to the sales team and that's how it will work and obviously the, you will get a revenue so i i strongly feel that the product marketing piece right it it it's basically like it's a function and without that the sales team can't able to execute because that's like a take lot of long time uh, and based on the account so i i i believe uh, sandeep can correlate because it's it's a it's a very very long process for a, a b2b business for selling a multi dollar business right so uh, you you must and should have those product marketing folks who will basically help you to nurture those leads doing automation campaign doing multiple those emails right so uh, not only that like it's based on the category i'm just giving an example so it it we can't say that uh, sales can work without marketing or marketing can work without sales it's it's not possible practically what what suman said you know automation um, nurturing streams those things come so naturally to us because we we worked on those but if you you know talk the same to a sales person who is not probably from a you know a new age startup they would not even these would be you know as as in school we used to say those oht overhead transmission they won't get it and they would say or oh, typical marketing guy with some new acronyms and trying to show off so unless the other side is also you know kind of made aware as to what these things are and automation really works nurture streams really work if not today if he hasn't clicked uh, put him into a nurture stream he would click make your subject lines very crisp very compelling those kind of things i think um, the sales team has to be made aware of and that's when uh, i think both the sides would sing the same song well i also feel that uh, you know uh, sales team are a bunch of uh, smart people right they they face the customer and since the customers themselves are uh, you know pretty uh, smart so i i i have my reservations whether the sales people they know about automation or they do you know because they they talk about it that, those are the selling points right so suman you manage both growth and marketing portfolio right what are the expectations of you know from your marketing hat to a sales hat okay and uh, yeah so what do you suman see uh, so when it comes to marketing hacks right so that the different kind of hacks that you can do based on your business again uh, when you ask this uh, so it kind of a very much broad question right so uh, like when we do it very much subjective very much uh, into the category very much into the business uh, so uh, because in in the even in startup ecosystem or even in b2b business right uh, whether in a small scale or a big scale it's based on the the objective what what exactly looking uh, after right uh, so the hack can be built on that uh, right let's say uh, you you pubg is not there in india today but how to how to rank your app on pubg keywords that can be a best hack so uh, you know again it's very much subjective right let's say you want to you know sell a uh, you know a two bhk flat in bangalore so how how to rank those keywords in in google right that can be a hack like it can be an seo it can be you know multiple things which involves to do that hack so uh, when it comes to sales hack or a marketing hack uh, if i understand the question correctly that again it's very much subjective uh, to that core goal that what the business is looking towards so uh, what i should suggest is that uh, before doing any hack uh, it's to all marketers that 
please understand who is your audience. Like, let's say I am I am doing a business or I am I'm a marketer. I am selling uh, online meat or, or I'm I'm selling uh, fish online, for example, right? So uh, in 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 an urban city, so who is my audience? So you have to understand that whether it comes to a meat, whether it comes to a grocery, whether it comes to a mobile, whatever you are selling, right? Or whether you are selling a software, it doesn't matter. But you have to know who is your target audience, what they do in their daily life, how much time they spend on what. That is critical before doing any hacks in practical world. Obviously, we, we need more sales deals so that we can execute those, right? Eventually. So uh, if, if, you, if you ask me, obviously, sales, if you don't have a sales, then uh, nothing will, nothing will uh, you know, exist, right? Whether product or marketing or any function of the company, right? Any, any mm. company is, is depending on that sales funnel or, or the, those, you know, the revenue numbers. So uh, it's, it's basically like we need a very much top funnel on the sales matrix so that the marketing can execute those deliverables in terms of content uh, as a business. Again, it varies between business to business what exactly you want to know, right? So uh, in any typical business, right, it's, it's driven by the product, it's driven by the, 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 the marketing that generates the number of leads and number of business. And then again, eventually that you know, sales comes. But if you, if you talk about a B2B business or if you talk about a, a very much offline kind of business, where the sales team basically drives the, the whole kind of a business where you're getting some of the revenue and the marketing and product function is the byproduct of it who, who are, are the levers to get more traffic and you know the, doing the back end work of that. I think uh, the, 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 around the question of what marketing wants from sales, right? I think there are two things I would think of. Right? One is, of course, uh, on-drawn realities in terms of how they're dealing with customers. For example, if they're seeing greater traction in a particular industry, if they're seeing greater traction in a, with a particular persona, um, what when I say persona, I mean job titles. For example, sometimes as organizations, you go after a specific set of job titles and suddenly you realize your sales counterparts are actually having, they're breaking, making more inroads to somewhere else, some other channel. So I think insights will always help on ground realities of what's happening, what's going on. Um, and sometimes it, it doesn't need a monthly meeting or a catch up to make that happen. When, when these things happen, I think it's good to keep marketing informed because Sales is the only guys who are constantly on the ground. They're the ones having those meetings, right? The, the second thing I would always, always recommend, I think so, this, will, this will help for greater alignment, right, is with regards to marketing campaigns. All our campaigns essentially are for sales, right? So they are the end, what can I say, users of this. To be able to have that close feedback loop, to be able to, uh, when a campaign is performing well, not performing well, what's the problem? Are my quality of leads bad? Um, or I'm struggling with conversations? Or am I getting too many rejections? What is happening with that particular campaign? Because only the thing is, if, if we just go purely by numbers, right? We just say, hey, because of this campaign, I've got pipeline revenue. It will give me some insight. It may not give me everything. Um, so I think and it also it doesn't help me reshape my campaign. It doesn't help me reshape maybe my messaging, uh, maybe the way I have or the kind of event that I've sponsored. I mean, there's several things, right? So I feel like that closed loop between sales and marketing should constantly be there. Only then you can never get better at your campaign. Otherwise, it's only based on what my cons uh, perception of what I think is the right campaign, and that's just going to keep running. So I think, yeah, just those things. I completely agree with what Sandeep said. You know, at times, uh, uh, it's so important to hear from them, and uh, especially on the part of persona. I, I am uh, in, in cybersecurity, I can give you an example. We suddenly are focusing more on, uh, you know, OT, uh, operational technology, as, a, as an um, area. And remember, there was probably um, some years back, we always used to talk about uh, changing the persona to an LOB focused one. So it's something similar. We increasingly want to reach out to plant heads, operational heads, uh, you know, uh, engineers on the shop floor, which which are those, um, you know, set of audience which probably haven't, haven't been profiled as yet. So it's so important to probably, you know, get that feedback from sales, uh, use your channels, reach out to your marketing community and check with them if you know they've got those details. So I think those are the kind of inputs that we definitely would want. And, and yes, uh, one more important thing that I definitely encourage uh, my, my sales counterparts and the business leaders is to 
involve marketing in there you know if, if you've got a culture of commit calls or cadence calls it's so important to be a part of those because that's when you get those real insights you know which which account manager which territory uh, which industry vertical is lacking so if you need to tweak your you know campaigns to fill that gap it's 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 little proactive than being reactive so i think those are the kind of things where i think we in marketing can definitely play that part and if sales also share those uh, you know they ready to share those kind of inputs it kind of benefits the entire organization absolutely with you absolutely with you shankar thank you sandeep uh, what would you recommend uh, or choose to change so that marketing can enable sales to do 2x okay uh, if you want you can draw any inputs from you know southeast asia neighbors that we can emulate uh, i think one of the bigger changes i feel like and i think yeah as, as i mentioned earlier on right there's got to be greater sync between the teams there's got to be greater hand holding uh, between the teams and like shankar also pointed out right you you can't look at marketing as just being somebody that will magically throw leads on you or somebody that will just magically make stuff appear i think sales uh, i think there should be a greater and i think shankar also mentions this right greater education about what marketing actually does um because i'm not kidding i there are meetings i've walked into and the people, our sales counterparts have gone let's do a digital campaign uh that's about it. it it stops there right so nobody knows what it is nobody knows how what goes on behind it nobody knows what outcomes will come as a result of it nobody understands budget it's just i've heard the word digital so i will try to uh, i feel like that will give me something right so i feel like the, the greater need to educate uh, on both fronts not just i'm saying it in fact on both sides right sales under marketing understanding the challenges of sales understanding how they go through their day to day uh, at the same time sales also understanding what marketing does in the larger scheme of things right so i feel like that the second part i think just holding on that education piece right i feel and this probably comes also in lines of sales enablement right i feel uh, sales need to also be told how to handle marketing leads depending on if a lead comes from an event what do you do if a lead comes from a webinar what do you do i don't i don't believe the treatment is all the same i believe the treatment is fairly different amongst each of these parts so i feel like there, there is a greater need for marketing to come take that step forward work with sales enablement whether it's a separate team or not and bring together hey how do you handle a particular kind of lead because uh, a demo request at a physical event is vastly different from something else right so i think uh, the way you treat different types of leads education around that also so i think there's a greater need of education i also feel uh, one of the aspects that can come into play is transparency in terms of data right so i'm saying data can drive great change uh, to be able to show give sales the the visibility of marketing campaigns in terms of hey my click rates my open rates not just that uh, if we, if if more data can be visible uh, it will also help sales understand how campaigns are performing it will also help everyone will understand the larger picture right so i feel like um, one is uh, be able to educate understand each other's issues problems and a uh, greater education around that and i also feel the other thing is to be able to build a stronger kind of a dashboard and of course dashboards and all that will only be possible if we have great software so to be able to have sales and marketing software that's essentially either integratable or it's essentially the same whatever right each one should be able to talk to each other only then any of your data will make sense so if you have the right technology if you're able to tell your teams how to sell i think you might just uh, be there no i'm absolutely with you you know uh... Uh, yeah i i don't totally agree you know there should be some accountability uh, as to uh, for x number of leads that were shared y days back what has been the outcome and so on and so forth right there has to be uh, you know accountability and it's not just that uh, good or bad uh, this thing cool uh, moving towards you know or perhaps uh, my last question to you shankar uh, taking a step forward from crm and sales ops sales operations what sort of technology interventions can be made to ensure 2x growth and also proper accrual to different teams interesting one so uh, i i am a firm believer uh, anand and i'm hoping the other uh, co panelists uh, also believe i uh, it's it's been around 3 4 years we started using account based marketing and we using a couple of tools for abm and mm -hmm. and we are so happy with the way uh, you know uh, some insights and some timely alerts come in and if there is a way you know and we we we've done that closed loop in terms of you know 
um, doing the ABM, talk to your sales force, talk, talk, talking to your Tableau, and kind of getting dashboards which are so meaningful. I think um, that it's it's a it's a slight uh, huge as as a tech uh, you know um, investment in terms of introducing those kind of things, but uh, the kind of insights and the kind of uh, you know um, inputs you get are mind blowing. So I can give you an example in a very um, simple layman terms. Um, uh, typically, we we've, we've heard our sellers you know work on a, a account uh, you know strategic accounts that they would want to focus on. For, uh, for for this year, um, those accounts. If you you know if you input that into a, a good account-based marketing uh, tool, um, that tool actually would monitor the kind of traffic you're getting on your website or on things. And the minute um, there are traffic emanating from that particular IP, which IP is attached to your targeted account, the territory manager or the account manager gets a live alert on his, you know, like a Slack or whatever you're using, saying that okay, we found uh, somebody from let's say xyz.com visiting our website, spending x number of minutes downloading these pages. Uh, sorry, downloading these assets, visiting these pages. Uh, it and if you know, if you see uh, that kind of following a pattern, it it's a very good input to give to your uh, TM, saying that okay, you know what, it's time to proactively go and visit that account because we've got reason to believe that something's happening there. So those kind of technological intervention, I, I think, are, are mind blowing. Uh, they are non intrusive. You're not um, it, it would not give you the, the person's name because you, you're only playing at an IP level. But still, yeah. the kind of intelligence you get is so good and you definitely can uh, can benefit the sales and give them very meaningful information. Mm, that's an interesting. Cool. So, uh, Suman, uh, perhaps towards the last question, uh, what processes or tools you would recommend that can make uh, lives of sales and marketing teams seamless and cohesive? Yeah, so uh, we should definitely have the CRM, uh, if not already in the place. You know, the lead nurturing grid and also the knowing that lead coming from which sources. So, again, uh, coming back to the, the platforms, whether the lead is coming from uh, organically or it's coming from, let's say, a page source, it's coming from an event, it's coming from a, a particular voting number, or it's coming from a missed call number. So you should know those uh, sources where the lead came from, practically, like in the first thing. And then again, you should you should able, you should be able to do all those engagement activities based on the the funnel. Then you know, based on the funnel, again you can again pass it to the sales team based on the, the region or, or the category it's falling in. So, uh, so it's everything as, as uh, Shankar also uh, mentioned, everything can be managed uh, by digitally or by by product itself that you capture by QP level, you capture by IP level. If you don't capture at least the user ID of the, the user, uh, there are most of the users uh, you know happen to come to the. They just come uh, happen uh, the most of the times where as you have to do uh, a push from marketing to again uh, you know uh, you know get back to that user who will read your content or who will, will come to your landing page and again fill the form right so mm -hmm. basically it it's a function that where you are generating and again you are nurturing those leads and pushing into the different different buckets. So that it will help to the, the ultimately the sales people uh, to to uh, to generate the revenue uh, based on category. Cool. Thank you so much, Suman. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Any parting thoughts that you want to uh, leave uh, for for the uh, audience? I think uh, there's always going to be a tussle between sales and marketing, and that's a given, right? So there's uh, there's there's no there's no two ways about that, right? Because uh, we're all fighting for the same thing. I think eventually, I think it comes down to the right kind of technology, uh, the right kind of data that's in place. And I think both teams shaking hands on what they want to achieve together and, and the level of transparency that they can bring about each other, right? If, if, if everyone feels like they're part of one team, I think, um, I feel like it's apart from all of that, it's, it's, a, it's a case of behavior as well. If uh, leadership can drive the behavior of sales and marketing being as one unit trying to drive for business, I think uh, everything can be achieved.
Shankar, any parting thoughts uh, for the audience? Uh, you know, I would I would simply say uh, to all my uh, uh, peers and counterparts, that dirty your hands on digital, social, automation platforms, ABM, etc. I think that's that's becoming increasingly a hygiene. Uh, please, please do that. That definitely um, is, is something that we marketeers at times shy away from doing an event, uh, calling an agency. Uh, those, those kind of things are old school and they were very easy to do. But I think increasingly, as, as Suman mentioned, and I'm sure there's so much to learn from Suman. And I'm, I'm going to call you back, Suman. But uh, the digital, uh, th these things uh, would, would be uh, something that that will stay. So I think that's one area where all of us need to keep sharpening our uh, skills. And I think, uh, as I said initially, uh, sales are, are just uh, your colleagues. So I think it's, it's, it's time that we just treat them as good buddies and uh, work with them uh, rather than taking directions from them. Sure, sure. Appreciate your thought process. So friends, we are almost on top of the hour. And you know we all know that growth is a necessity. And we learned how marketing function can better support the front end sales teams to close more and faster. We must keep identifying new ways of improving the interdepartmental support so that the common goal of organizational growth is achieved. We also discussed how technology can come to rescue. I'm confident that you have enjoyed this enriching session as much as I did. Moreover, it is always beneficial to hear from the leaders directly. You can watch the past webinars on www.cxotv.news. I thank each one of you for taking out time and attending this event and wish you all the success during these challenging times. With this, we call it a day. Thanks once again for your esteemed presence and wish you a great week ahead. Thank you, Sandeep, Shankar, and Suman. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.